Welcome back to another video out in the country. Today is sunny and beautiful. That means we're gonna get to work on the bedroom again. I like to get to work whenever I can, especially when we have some nice lighting in there and you guys can see what we're doing. Today, I'm gonna to try to get some insulation in the walls and we'll see what else can get done. We only have a few materials on hand, so we're just gonna try to use what we got. We don't have much insulation to do, but might as well do it safely. I need a mask. All right, we're here in the bedroom and it looks so good. I love seeing the bedroom. It's just fun to watch it come together, taking shape. I have two bundles. Well, this one's open. We took a piece out for the last room. This is all the insulation we have on hand. I have to buy more. My hope is to get as much of this wall done as I can today. And then we'll take it from there. Might even get some drywall on the ceiling. And speaking of the ceiling, I should note, because we've had a couple questions about it, um, we put plastic on the ceiling. That's required in our area. And we have no insulation because we're gonna be doing blow-in cellulose insulation. And so what we're doing is waiting, even though it's a huge hassle to get up in that attic, we'll figure that out. Um, we're waiting until we have a few rooms done so that we, we can rent the machine to blow the insulation in and just do a bunch of it all at once. We don't wanna do every room, blow it in, blow it in. It would just be too many times driving back and forth, renting equipment. So um, we'll probably try to get the three bedrooms done and then blow all that in at once, something like that. I have a bag of scraps. This is scraps from the last room. So what I'm gonna do is use these scraps to fill in like odd spaces along the floor. We have some like uh, gaps and stuff like that. So I'll start with this stuff. You see what I mean? Because we built these walls out, now we have this space down here. And what I can do is kind of take some of this and fill these in so that my bats fit in there better. We got to use every bit of it, waste not, want not, no point in throwing it away. This stuff is so cool. And we're getting it done. There we go, perfect fit. I love this insulation. Like butter. All right, that's what I got done with those two bundles. I got almost the whole wall done except for this last bay over here. That's a shame, I really wish I could have got the whole wall done, but at least we got that out of the way. I also used up a lot of the small stuff in these bottom areas, so we're ready to do the next set of insulation. We shouldn't need too much more actually, because this wall has a big window on it. Anyway, I'm done sweating in this thing, so let me go uh, sweep the floor, get cleaned up, and I'll come back to you. So I'm back and ready to keep working. We're gonna be doing drywall on the ceiling. Let's get this whole ceiling covered. That'll feel so good. And to make that easier, we're gonna to put together our drywall lift. Before we start drywalling the ceiling, I gotta do one more nailer, and that's in the closet right here. Um, you see the closet walls here have plenty of support for the drywall. But back here, I won't have anything to nail the end into. It would actually be strong enough to just to nail it there. But for extra security, 
and we're gonna go ahead and put a nailer up there, which means I gotta crawl back into the attic with a piece of wood and screw it down from the top. Nailer complete. You gotta like squeeze it. There it is. Goes on the other way. Oh, you're right. What are you, a pro? Yeah. Very wrong. There we go. Oh, we're gonna have to cut both these light boxes in. Oh, yeah. So I'm just uh, scoring a line around where the light fixture box is because my hole saw makes a rough hole and this will help keep it neat. Whoop. So when I bought this saw, I thought this is really cool. It's like a keyhole saw that you can change the blades on with any reciprocating saw blade. And I thought that was really neat because I hate dull blades and it makes it so much more versatile. I can use it for cutting branches or cutting metal or whatever I want. So I was exciting to get, the, I was excited to get this, but I'm finding that I don't like it for drywall work because I can't find any good blades to cut drywall. A lot of these uh, reciprocating saw blades, the teeth uh, alternate outward. So it's like back and forth, they wing out and it makes for a rough cut instead of having the blades, like the teeth straight in a line. And they're just too big and it's just really hard to get a smooth cut in there. So it's a cool tool. We could bring it out in the field, do some work, but I might still have to find a better drywall blade uh, cutting tool. Pretty tight, pretty clean. Some of those screws are sinking in deep. I don't know, it feels soft. But anyway, the uh, the sheet is up. Before I continue on, you see I overhung my the butt of my board over the gap. That means we're gonna be doing butt boards again. If you guys don't know what a butt board is, maybe I'll post a video soon. I, I made an edited clip about that. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we can re-upload that from our previous video, but we'll show you what it is. So here's our two nine inch boards, believe it or not, we're only gonna have two butt seams on the whole ceiling, so that's really cool. And these will just serve the purpose of hiding those butt seams. Perfect. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but I gotta cut the end off, cut the edge off, cut the light out and notch off for the closet. So this one has a lot of cuts on it and hopefully we can get them all right. So let's see if I can get this up by myself. Shouldn't be too bad. Guys, my workspace is so crowded. Thank 
볼게요. It's a little here, a little there. The work gets done. Everything came out good. All the cuts were good. Mm -hmm. We had two butt seams. Yeah, this room was way easier. I'll show you around a little. Got that area. We got over here. Pretty clean all the way around. This was easier than our room. Smaller, yeah. less butt seams. Now that butt joint, you know I use those butt boards. I'm not gonna go into big detail about that because we've talked about it in detail before, but it basically uh, is a way of drawing those two end seams up to create an, a, a taper at the end. So you can tape it and finish it and have a nice flush ceiling. So like I said, I'll probably try to post a video about that, repost the video. Get this out of the way and then we got five more sheets, six more sheets left and we can uh, start doing the walls. Surprise! Ashley and I worked on this last night. We got it all done. Sorry we didn't film it, but we were just hustling in the dark. Look at it, it looks so good. This is our 11 sheets of drywall that we had left over. You saw us do the ceiling, and then we just wrapped the walls. Let's look around. We got all inside the closet done, all the way around to the corner. We stopped on this wall because I didn't get, have enough insulation for this last bay, so I gotta finish insulating that wall before we can finish. But we got this wall done and around the door. So actually that was a lot done. We got probably half the room done worth of drywall plus the ceiling with just leftover sheets from doing the bedroom that I had ordered extra. So it's moving along. Now we're at a standstill. We're probably gonna take a break on it for a little while because we gotta save up some money to buy a couple more bunches of insulation and one, two, three, four, Six, maybe six more sheets of drywall. It shouldn't be too bad. This also gives me time to uh, plan out some of the small details and do some shopping for some things that we might want to get. Speaking of shopping, today we got Belle's rug. We had ordered that. So that's here. She hasn't seen it. Luckily, it came bundled up in a white tube. So that's awesome. We haven't even seen it yet. Even though the room is coming out good, some of you guys, especially you drywall and pros, are going to criticize my work. Look at, I know, these gaps up here, they're ugly. This is terrible. When you hang drywall, you should probably butt it up to the ceiling and leave the gap at the floor. That's what you normally do. They make a little tool for that. It's just a little foot lever. You put it under the drywall, you push your foot on it, it heaves it up, and then you can screw it in. I keep forgetting to pick one up. I've been wanting to buy one, and I just keep forgetting. And we get everything else but that, and they're not expensive. They're pretty cheap, and they just make your job look a lot more cleaner. And the gap at the top isn't a big deal for us, but you know, you gotta fill it with all that compound. It's a waste of compound and more likeliness of your paper pulling in or probably cracking or who knows what. So hopefully I can remember to pick up that tool and going forward we won't have those big gaps at the top of the wall. Luckily, we're gonna be doing the white paper technique in here and that white paper is really forgiving and it covers everything. It's almost like adding another layer of paper to the drywall paper and it just makes it all like one cohesive unit and gives it strength. And that's also why, again, if you, if you guys are paying attention here, you'll see I did some butt seams. I did a, a butt seam right here, a butt seam right here. Why? Because I wanted to use up some scraps on these small spaces. And most people who do drywalling know you don't want to end your seam like that. That's the worst place to put a seam because it cracks. It most likely will crack with time. Uh, they say never to end a seam like over a door or a window like this. But again, we, we're using paper over this and the paper is gonna be like bonding it all together. It'll never crack like paint would. So because our paper technique is forgiving, I'm going ahead and just leaving it like that. Whenever possible though, I try to span a full sheet at least 
past the opening or over the center of the opening, not at the corner. Also, another problem with this is if you do a butt seam here, you could have a hump on your wall and your trim isn't gonna lay flat. I'm probably not gonna even do a butt seam. I'm just gonna paper over that. So even though I'm at a standstill right now, I have some things I can kind of do. I'm gonna start taping some of these seams and getting them ready because we have compound, we have tape, and if I can get a head start on some of these tricky seams like this where I gotta go around these boxes and maybe put these corner trims on here that I'm gonna be doing, then that gets us ahead of the game later on. I'm gonna be starting with this seam right here because I wanna fill it in before I put my corner trim on so that we don't have that dip right there. So I'm just gonna work on this one seam, one job, one simple thing I can do to move us further along. Start from the center, work your way out. I'm just filling up that groove. What? So I'm filling up that groove. And looks good. Don't worry about perfection on this first coat. Just Do it like that. Fill it up and you can come back and hit it on your second coat to fill it in more and smooth it out. This looks good. So I'm still working on the compound in here and as you can see I did the seams all the way around the closet, all the way around this wall and it's coming out good. I even did some of the bus seams on the ceiling. Once all these seams are dry I'll go back and do the corner seams where the walls and ceiling meet little at a time, it's getting done. We still need to buy the rest of the materials to get the other walls done. But in the meantime, we'll do what we can. Again, another step done. Uh, this room's coming together pretty quickly. The work is going smoothly. I can't wait to see the finished product. So I'm gonna keep working and try to get some more compound finished up tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And until next time, take care.